welcome to another edition of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. How are you guys doing? It's hump day. It is hump Woo -woo. day. Nice to know that we're halfway through the week and we're going to get you through the rest of it, of course, with a couple of incredible guests who are going to be talking about something that's quite a pressing issue for a lot of people. That's right. So, I mean, it's been raining um, literally non-stop mm -hmm. the past week, which is very, very different for June, I must admit. Um, and it's made me want to sleep in all the time, but not everyone gets that luxury in that sense. Yeah. Some parents, people do find it quite parents difficult. Parents just don't oh. get a lion, um, but then there are people who don't have children that are also missing out on sleep. And it's an important thing because without good sleep, a lot of other functions tend to not happen as well. I mean, you can't focus on your work, you can't really work out very well, you're a lot less productive, and you're very, very cranky. Trust me, I would know. So we're going to be bringing on two very special guests today we've got the professional doctor side of things but we're also bringing in a real human um, and we're going to try wow. and a real, a real human <laughs> as opposed to AI which a lot of people have been a real human okay with a real sleep issue right because a lot of the time you know we talk to people and we get all this advice yes do this do that do this do that um, and it's sometimes it's just a little bit difficult to really take that on board okay. but if you're sitting here with the advice being thrown at you right um, and you get your questions answered on the spot then hopefully um, our real human will be able to go home and have a good night's sleep tonight but we are going to bring on the professional first yes that's we right. have with us dr richard swinburne he is a sleep scientist and also the head of sport nutrition at ssi so dr richard swinburne please join us on our Lovely couch. This good is for morning. you. Good morning. Good. Well, good morning. Good evening. Um, oh, good. Yeah. good evening. That's right. <laughs> so, how are you? How How are you doing? Good, thanks. Yeah. Are you yeah. having any issues sleeping? Not too bad. That's but a... not too bad at the moment. Yeah. Um... So you head up the uh, sports nutrition yes. um, at SSI, but you're also yeah. a sleep scientist. Yeah. So uh, just tell us a. a a little bit about what exactly those two aspects entailed at SSI. Sure. We have a wonderful group of um, talented scientists, about 20 at SSI, from five different disciplines. Um, strength and conditioning, psychology, physiology, biomechanics, um, the study of human movement, and skill acquisition, and of course nutrition. So nutrition is all about um, fueling the athlete, recovering the athlete, um, getting them to really um, thrive on real food, I suppose. Uh, and of course sleep. Um, I was a registered um, dietitian before I was a sleep scientist. Um, about 10 years ago I jumped sideways into the world of sleep and it really hooked me and grabbed me. I'm just totally fascinated with sleep and, um, and the power of sleep. It's a performance enhancing drug honestly. For, you're talking about real humans, we've got a real human coming. <laughs> it's a performance enhancing drug for real humans. Um, now, you know what's quite interesting? Like, I, since having devices, especially like wearables and everything, like, yeah. I've actively tracked my sleep a lot more than I ever have before. Like, I wasn't really aware of it. Right. And I suddenly came to realize that actually my quality of sleep is not that fantastic. Like, the yeah. amount of deep sleep I get, like, yes. literally every night I'm at like 38 minutes. Well, when you have a kid's foot in your face, I'm guessing it's a little bit harder to get quality sleep in. That is true. But like, <laughs> yeah. how, how much deep sleep should we be getting? This is me just really wanting to know. <laughs> Another real human. <laughs> Another oh. real human. Well, we, we get lots of it uh, when we're little um, because it's in deep sleep that we repair and grow physically. Um, and then we get less and less uh, as we get older and older. Mm -hmm. um, those um, devices can be a little bit distracting though. I mean, they're just guessing actually. The only way to really know how much deep sleep you're getting is to put you in a lab and wire your, your brain up. Yeah, so um, take it with a grain of salt. Nice to um, be self-aware, um, but, but you know, don't absolutely believe what it's telling you because it's really just running off a mathematical algorithm okay. and it's just guessing, yeah. Uh, that's a bit of a relief then. <laughs> yeah. so I mean, I love it when we have scientists on the show. It just it brings me back to Big Bang Theory so much. But <laughs> is it is your day to day job really this whole like people are plugged up and no. they've got wires and they're running on treadmills or right. you're you know you have them in this room and they're lying down and you're tracking their sleep and you've got the night cams on. In Barbara's head, it's all a TV oh. show. What's it really like? It's like this. 
actually. Ah. The name of the game is behavior change, isn't it? Whether people are eating or whether they're sleeping. I mean, they're the two primary behaviors. We're actually, um, you know, doing both in the womb, aren't we, before we're even born? That is true. Yeah. Then what about that correlation then between eating and sleeping? Yeah, there's a big intersection between diet and sleep. Um, they, it's um, bi-directional, so they influence each other. So mm -hmm. if you've had a really uh, rubbish sleep overnight, you'll feel hungrier and you'll feel like different foods. It won't be the carrots and the celery, it'll be the sugar and the starchy foods. Oh. Um, yeah, about six hours is the magic number, less than six hours sleep, and you will feel like eating very differently and eating more. Um, your appetite hormones get elevated. Ghrelin is an appetite hormone and it gets elevated and your satiety hormones are suppressed. Your metabolic rate also decreases about 10% um, because sleep is meant to be resting us, isn't it? You know, it's a survival mechanism. We don't want to burn ourselves out. So let's just slow down the engine a little bit. Um, and so there's a big relationship between um, weight management and sleep. When I was training as a dietitian, it was energy in, energy out. But, but now we know that sleep is the third corner of the triangle and very, very important one. Oh, yeah. so fascinating. Yeah. And, I mean, so you're basically day in, day out, just working with the athletes to make sure that they have that nice, complete triangle? That's right, yeah. It's, um, it's their training ethic and their training quality. It's what they're eating and it's what they're sleeping. Amazing. Uh, how they're sleeping, yeah. All right, so we're going to dive a little bit more into the diet aspect of being able to get a good night's sleep in just a okay. while. We're going to go for a quick break first. When we come back, we are joined by Marissa True, our real human, um, with a little bit of a sleep issue. So hopefully we can help her and, and figure out um, how she can go home today and have a good night's sleep. Don't go anywhere. Barbara Kelly's popped up for just a little bit, but we have our real human here with us. This is Marissa True. Welcome. Hi, pleasure now, to be here. You are a, a writer, a digital creator, but you're also the host of the Just So We're Clear podcast, which yeah. is amazing. I'm going to do a little plug on that if you need to something to listen to. Um, not to fall asleep, though, because these girls are very, very entertaining. <laughs> um, so we've brought you on today because literally every time um, I've done a shout out on social media about sleep, when I've struggled to sleep or giving out sleep tips, you've always responded. Yes. Um, and you've been like, if you can figure it out, let me know uh, Absolutely, yeah. what works. So the reason why we called you on today was because you've got a very interesting story. You had trouble sleeping before, mm -hmm. kind of fixed it yeah. um, and managed to get a good sleep in. Yeah. Uh, but now you're struggling to sleep again. So talk us through that little story. How did you fix it at first? Did you figure out why you couldn't sleep before? Well, I think it actually had to do a lot with just general life stress and managing that. Um, when I first dealt with it, and it was also to do with what you were saying earlier, it was mm -hmm. diet driven. Mm -hmm. um, the foods I was eating at night weren't really enough maybe to sustain me throughout the entire eight hours that I wanted to sleep. So mm -hmm. I'd wake up hungry mm -hmm. and need to get a snack and then the cycle would start over. 
So once I managed diet, I managed stress, and I did all the usual tips and tricks, you know, like minimizing screen time, dim, warm lighting, all of that sort of stuff. Aromatherapy, I was spraying my pillows religiously with lavender. Just lavender, um, all yeah. up in there. Just snorting lavender, and um, <laughs> it, all, it just seemed to work. I thought, you know, this is obviously not a chronic issue. This is something that I can actually just deal with lifestyle changes. Yeah. Um, but then as of, say, the last six weeks, I found myself back in the same cycle, but it was less hunger driven this time. Mm. It was more, I would go to sleep and think, I would be tired at the end of the day. Mm. Um, and I would go to sleep, no problem, but almost like clockwork around 3.30, 4 a.m. I would have the usual, you wake up, you need to go, like, you need to, go to the bathroom, but you keep your eyes shut, you don't turn any lights on, you mm. sort of feel your way through your home. Yeah. And then you lie back down thinking, okay, I'm just gonna go back to sleep now. Two hours later, we're still there. Yeah. Three yeah. hours later, we're still there. And then by that point, I've got a book. I've got, I mean, I might have like a cup of tea. I may as well start my day. And then, and then I fall, fall asleep, asleep again. <laughs> and it's always when you've kind of decided, you know what, I might as well stay awake now and start the day, that you fall into a really deep exactly, sleep. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, and I've had that before as well, the whole religiously waking up at 2.30 to at least 4.30, 5 o'clock. Um, and the frustration is real because I've also felt then you get sleep anxiety. Mm. You're stressed about not being able to sleep. Yeah. You're stressed about waking up and not being able to fall asleep again. Mm. So like you mentioned, a lot of us have been given advice um, throughout these times, you know, develop a sleep routine. Mm -hmm have lavender all yes. up in that room, you know, yeah. minimize your screen time, get blue light glasses. Yeah. Um, but I really wanted to touch on today, especially with Dr. Rico being yeah. here, the effect that diet plays, yeah. um, not just the amount they eat, but what we're eating and how that can affect us going to bed um, and falling asleep. Yeah. Insights. Let's go. We're <laughs> all willing to learn here. Um. You know, sleep is such a fascinating process and, and there's a lot that influences um, how readily we can fall asleep, our sleep latency, and, and how well we can stay asleep as well. Um, certainly nutrition influences our sleep and our propensity to fall asleep and stay asleep. Um, studies have shown that if you have a meal about four hours before you want to go to sleep and, and containing carbohydrate, that exerts a very profound influence on your melatonin secretion, your sleep hormone your hormone of darkness and, um, and protein. You mentioned there that you were waking mm. up feeling hungry yeah. uh, and protein is a really important nutrient overnight because obviously we're going through all of our repair, um, our rebuild um, and protein is very filling as well, you know, mm -hmm. particularly if you have a physically active lifestyle, um, you know, muscular um, remodeling, really important overnight. Um, and then there's um, this issue of inflammation. So when we don't sleep well, we actually have a subclinical level of inflammation in our body and it kind of has this negative conversation with the brain um, and the sleep center in our brain. And studies have found, for example, with kiwi, um, trust a, a kiwi to talk about kiwi. But, <laughs> it, but it we is just had to slip it, it in is, there. I had to, but it's true. Um, so one interesting study found that people who consume two kiwi one hour before bed over six weeks, improve their sleep quality by 13%. Quite I mean, amazing. it's worth a shot, right? There's a, there's a cold storage nearby. <laughs> Ki kiwi are really um, jammed up with uh, serotonin, uh, which we convert into melatonin. Um, also antioxidants, vitamin C. Antioxidants can just turn down that secondary inflammation in the body, particularly if you're physically active. Athletes don't generally sleep very well. Um, they sleep worse than um, non-athletes uh, because they are physically sore uh, and inflamed a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But I think, Marissa, um, by the sounds of things, your sleep hygiene pattern, you've done a lot of reading on that. Yeah. Um, when I give talks, I ask the audience, um, you know, if, if you've had children, put your hands up. Um, okay, you, um, you've got a PhD in sleep because <laughs> you've done it with your children. That is sleep hygiene and it works for little humans and it works for big humans as well. Um, and that whole, that whole routine that we take them through from giving them a meal with the carbs and the protein, a drink of milk, there's some tryptophan, a protein, we make melatonin with that. Um, and then we give them a, a warm bath, uh, some skin warming, very, very effective. Warm bath. Mm. A recent study found that if you have a warm shower for 10 minutes, you'll fall asleep much, much faster. Um, 
and then we uh, we say goodnight to the giraffe and the hippopotamus, and we never mix that order up, do we? You know, the routine is very important. Um, and the room is actually nice and cool, it's not too hot, but we make sure they're nice and snuggly with a warm blanket. Um, but um, temperature actually exerts a very profound effect over our sleep quality. Um, you will sleep much better in a cool room. Um, science has found out that the ideal temperature is about 18 degrees Celsius, which okay, is really... Okay, that is, that is quite cold. It's really quite <laughs> That's cold. That's my kind of temperature. Yes. <laughs> I, was say that. Yes. I put my air con at like 25 degrees. Yeah, so if you turn it down a little bit, okay, let's... Um, let's say 20, 18 to 22. Let's give you a sure. little bit of room to move there. Because you know- <laughs> Just there, like I gotta oh, get my there, winter okay. jacket. Hey, how many blankets can I put on? What is going on? Well, I'm from a cold country too, and I've maladapted to that. You know, yeah. I, I struggle now too, um, if it's too cold. But that will really help a lot. Um, but it sounds perhaps more it's uh, anxiety and stress related, which is a really nasty sleep assassin Mm. as I would describe it, yeah, and it just kind of gets in there. The fact that you're um, sleeping soundly for the first half of the night is no surprise because for the first half of the night you spend a lot of time in deep sleep um, and that's obviously when you're just completely knocked out and, and nothing, you know, there could yeah. be an earthquake and nothing, Absolutely or, or, or nothing a cyclone, you would probably yeah. sleep through that. <laughs> Um, but then for the second half of the night, we spend a lot of time in light sleep and in dream sleep, REM sleep. Um, during dream sleep, you're actually paralyzed um, and you're doing a lot of amazing things in there, um, building emotional intelligence, um, creativity, doing a lot of learning. There's a huge learning component to, to dreaming um, and memory consolidation as well and skill practice too for athletes. Um, but light sleep, you know, um, you, you kind of, you, your ears are open a little bit. And if you're stressed and anxious, you know, you're probably not going into that, um, into that sleep in the same way as well. Um, there is a really interesting first night effect you were describing to me before how you travel a lot. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting for you to reflect on that because when we sleep in a new environment, we kind of only sleep with half our brain. Um, and I think this happens to, um, to, to new mums as well. Mm -hmm. You know, they've always got one ear open. Yes. Um, and you talk to the dad the next day, well, I didn't hear anything. Um, and, you know, <laughs> he's but, like, yeah, it's and, and it's like, well, how was that night for you, dear? And, you know, well, I was up like five times. And, you know, so mums don't really sleep deep too. It's, um, it's a protective thing. Uh, but when we're in a new sleep environment, you know, we, we're also a little bit alert to the environment. Um, interestingly, dolphins, all aquatic mammals sleep with one half of their brain at a time too. Yeah, so it's but just they a, have a they have a good sleep. That they, they, they that's what they're meant to do. Yeah, they switch sides um, because you know if they all if it all shuts down, they, yeah. they sink to the bottom of the ocean, don't they? Um, yeah. So I think perhaps um, just working on the on the stress side of things. Yeah. Um, it's it's a common problem at the moment, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns out there, and a lot of people they're very worried about their livelihoods and, yes. and a lot of stress in their Definitely. lives. Yeah. And so strategies to try and help with that. Um, I mean, I, I was in that situation when I was in New Zealand. I ran my own business. Um, I was doing like 12 things at once. Um, and, uh, you know, I tried not to even drink water before I went to bed because I knew if I had to go up and go to the bathroom. Oh, that yeah. was a done deal. Oh, yeah. that was game over. Oh, I, would start, <laughs> I would start thinking. So I've been in that seat um, and it's not easy. I found that writing down like a to-do list before I went to bed, and I'd do it in the kitchen rather than the bedroom, that really Kinda helped me. Kind of get it out of the mind. Yeah. Oh, that, that helped me a lot, because I would just lie in bed just thinking, like I was anxious about, like I didn't want to drop the ball. Yeah. I didn't want to forget to do something. That was a game changer for me. Um, yeah. So um, a quick recap then, before we wrap up this segment, to fix Marissa, yeah. we've got we've got a to-do list. Yeah. Um, what else have we taken away from this in terms of you have to manage our stress levels? I've got stress levels. Think like a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to take a hot bath, um, write down my to-do list, and also minimize water. Just just on the off chance that it helps, because I drink a lot of water in the day. And oh, there was one more that I took. Diet. Diet, I think we can... We talked about yeah. the kiwi, tart, cherry, yeah, very I'll take, yeah, I'll start eating a kiwi before yeah. I go to sleep. I'll leave you with a quick story. World War II, um, British fighter pilots, very anxious before they went into battle, would not sleep. Um, and they brought in um, a teacher, actually, who ran a sleep, um, a sleep anxiety program with the pilots. 
And, and it all hinged around the musculature around the eyes. We have about 46 different muscles in our face. And you have a note of this when you wake up next time and when you're trying to go to sleep, um, you probably find you're a bit tight around the eyes and it's yeah. just a subconscious signal to your brain that something's not quite right. Um, and so if you really try hard to just um, relax all of those muscles around your eyes firstly, and then imagine yourself um, floating uh, in a boat on a really calm lake and, you, and it's a blue sky and there's just a nice fluffy cloud that just drifts across the top. Try that. For me, nine times out of ten, it, I'm out um, within about three minutes. And we want to hear about results as well, yeah? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I will add on to that in that this was the thing that I never expected to work, but I couldn't rest my mind on a particular evening. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just to fall asleep in the first instance, not, not even like the second time after I woke up. And it actually took imagining different animals falling asleep for Aww. me to fall asleep. We're not counting sheep anymore, we're no. imagining them fall asleep. Yeah, like you think yeah. of like a car falling asleep or a puppy, eventually you're like, that's, that's, that's lovely. Okay. You're distracting <laughs> yourself, that you're, you're overwriting your anxiety by imagining. Yeah. Right. So anything visual happens in the, in the front of the brain, and that's where you worry too, and you can't do the two things at once. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So it's called overwriting, that's, that's really nice. Well, thank yeah. you so much for all of that advice. Yeah, I was just welcome. completely attention driven to you. I was like, tell me more. That's yeah. great. Uh, Marissa, thank you also for joining us and being our little human experiment. Marissa is going to be staying with us uh, and doing a workout with us a little bit later on. But thank you, Dr. Rico, You're for welcome. just imparting all that knowledge on us. We're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we're going to sweat it out. Don't go anywhere. with Kelly and Barbara. Marissa is still with us. She's going to be joining us for a little sweat session today. Now, today is actually swimmer lap day. And given that we don't have a pool no. that we can do laps in and the weather's been absolutely horrible uh, to do anything outside, we're going to do a couple of exercises that I've put together um, that are swimming inspired okay. in, in the terms that these are dry land things that swimmers do. So we're going to lie on the floor and just no, 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 wave no, no. our arms It's about. all about hip openers, oh. a little bit of hip power going on for when they push off. So we're going to go straight into it. Our first exercise is a lateral lunge. This helps to open up the groin and hip muscles. Right. Um, so we're going to go in about 10 seconds. You want to make sure you go down and keep that chest up nice and high as possible. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to go in three, 40 seconds on, two, one, and let's go. 
So you want to go to the side, that's it. Making sure that that opposite leg stays nice and firm on the ground. All of our knees just cracking yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. We can feel I think out. that's mine. Yeah. The one that's echoing through the yeah. hall. Yeah, my right knee is not great. If you have dodgy knees, what can we do to modify? Oh, you're asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, so you want to not go out too far. Right. Okay. So you can keep it a little bit narrow so, so that you don't have to push up right too there. much. Yes, just there. And then go down and then feel it come up. You can take it a little bit slower. We've got five more seconds. In three, in two, and one. Great. Next exercise, super duper fun. When she I'm says that, I uh, doubt. I'm going to demonstrate it first. You can do this with the resistance banding you want. We're going to lie on our right elbow. You're going to bring your hips up off the ground and bring that, what's it called, the left knee <laughs> up to the top. So this is a lot of hip strengthening and hip opening as well. All right, let's go. 40 Oof. seconds on the right side, and then we'll do 40 seconds on the left side. Marissa's been a champ <gasps> and working on that. We're trying. <laughs> So you'll feel a nice squeeze in the left glute um, as it squeezes up, but also a constant work in the right glute as you maintain nice height in your hips. That's it. And then there's a little bit of plank and core strength going on as you hold it up high through the elbow. We've got three more seconds, two, one, and good. So we're just going to switch to the other side at this point. Cool. <sighs> so you do one side, if you want a nice bum, go do the other side as well. Hip opener is always super crucial um, for swimmers when it comes to rotation and stuff like that. If the sun comes out, you can go swim a lap instead of doing this. We're going to go in three, two, one. All right, hips up and a clamshell. Bring it back down. So when you open up, you want to go as far as you can. Squeeze it and bring it back down. Squeeze it and bring it back down. Good. Maintaining nice height in those hips. And we smile. And we look like we're having fun and enjoying each other's company. We've got 15 seconds left. Squeeze. Keep bring smiling, it in. Barbara. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> bring it in. Oh, I caught me out on that one. And squeeze. I feel the sweat developing on my upper lip. We've got one more exercise after this in three, two, one, and break. Good. Now, a lot of the time swimmers need power to kind of push off from the block. Oh, we stand up now. Oh. Uh, push off from the block or pushing off from the wall. So instead of doing pure jump squats, I want to do nice controlled power squats. So you're going to go down to the squat and I want you to squeeze up so we go onto our tippy toes at the end of it. Okay. okay in three, two, one, let's go. Squat and then you push out with power toes. and do a little bit of like a little pause at the top. Not like tip forward or backward. It's the so balance. that's where the balance and the, the control Squeeze. comes in. Yeah. So you're almost, you're powering up like a jump, but you're maintaining a certain level of control. I was going to say the problem is going to be when you start doing it after those clamshells and you're going to end up with a butt cramp. No. <laughs> we got a few more seconds to go in three, two, one, and Ooh. we're done. I, I definitely feel I it like right inside there. That was a nice targeted <laughs> workout. Well, that is it for today, Marissa. I hope with all the advice and the workout, you get a solid, pure night's sleep tonight. Oh. Um, we are going to be checking in back with Marissa on socials to see how and if the uh, sleep techniques by Dr. Rico have worked. And if they've worked for you as well, do drop us a note and a comment and let us know. We'd love to hear from you. What's coming up on Friday? We've got social campaigns coming your way. That's right. When uh, in these trying times, I think different companies have taken different approaches when it comes to marketing and giving back to their communities. So, so we're going to sure. be having ch having chats. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm chats are coming your way. She's out of breath. Make sure you join us for Friday's edition of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara, 8 p.m. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.